Hello, this is Tony Payne, co-founder and CEO of Highbyte. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to configure Sparkplug, one of our latest features in the Highbyte Intelligence Hub 1.2 release. Sparkplug adds interoperability to the MQTT standard. It does this by defining how topics and data should be formatted, allowing applications from different vendors to seamlessly exchange data. I'm using Inductive Automation's Ignition application as a Sparkplug consumer as part of this demo. Ignition stores Sparkplug data under the Edge Nodes folder, shown here as part of Ignition's namespace. Let's see how to configure the Highbyte Intelligence Hub to populate this folder with model information as well as simple data points. We begin the process of configuring Sparkplug within the Highbyte Intelligence Hub by creating a Sparkplug connection. This is done by creating a new connection and assigning it a unique name. We'll then select the Sparkplug protocol and enter the host and port of the MQTT broker that our Sparkplug clients will subscribe and publish to. Given Sparkplug leverages the MQTT standard, many of these settings probably look familiar to you. You will enter in a unique client ID to identify this connection, optionally set a username and password, and set the connection timeout and keep alive rates. In addition to subscribing to Sparkplug information, the product also allows you to subscribe to Sparkplug data. By setting a request timeout, you can specify how long the Highbyte Intelligence Hub should wait for subscribe data to arrive before timing out. You will also need to add the Sparkplug group ID and edge node ID. The group ID identifies a collection of Sparkplug nodes, while the edge node ID specifies a unique node within this group. Just like MQTT, you can also choose to leverage SSL or flatten model values before publishing the results. Next, we need to create some outputs on the Sparkplug connection that we will publish to. We will first create an output for the Edge of Network node, or EON. Here we only have to specify the output name and can leave the optional device ID and metric name unassigned. Next we will create an output for an attached device. We'll call this My Device. This is where we assign a device ID. We'll still leave the optional metric name unassigned. Lastly, we'll create an output that overrides the Sparkplug metric name we will publish to. We will set this for the EON, leaving the device ID unassigned, but assign a metric name. Now we just need to wire up a flow that we will publish to Sparkplug. The first flow we will create will map a model value to the first Sparkplug output we created, the edge of network output. We'll select a model value for the source and then we'll select the edge of network output for the target. We will publish this every five seconds and then enable the flow immediately. Let's check out our Sparkplug client application and see the published results. Expanding edge nodes, we see new folders associated with the group ID and edge node ID we set in the Highbyte Intelligence Hub connection. Below that, we see our model value, Simple Machine X, and all of its contained attributes. Next, we will wire up a simple data value and publish it to the Sparkplug attached device we called My Device. We will follow the same steps as before, except this time we'll select a simple input as the source and our My Device output as the target. Switching back to our Sparkplug client, we now see a new folder called My Device. This represents the attached device we are publishing as. Below this, we can see the simple input named System Date Local Time that came from our connection called Data Server. Let's create one more flow that shows how we can override the metric name that we publish. We will use the same simple input and other settings as the last flow. The only difference is that we'll select the edge of network output that specified a metric name. Switching back to the client, we can now see a new metric called metric A. This is the same input value we previously saw. However, in this case, we had overridden the optional metric name that was part of the output definition. Now it is time to subscribe to some Sparkplug data. We will publish the subscribe data to this sample OPC client application and write it to the simulated float value. If you recall, we have some Sparkplug data available at Ignition. 
we will subscribe to this data point called utilization, which we will then write to the OPC client application. We can subscribe to this Sparkplug data point by adding an input to our Sparkplug connection within the Highbyte Intelligence Hub. We will give the input a unique name. Since this metric is associated with the EON, we do not need to assign a device ID. However, we must supply a metric name. This is simply the path to the input as we saw in the admission Sparkplug namespace. All that's left to do is to wire up a flow and send the data to OPC. Here we will select the Sparkplug input as the source and map it to an OPC output as the target and then commit the flow. Returning to our OPC client application, we can now see that we're publishing the Sparkplug metric called utilization. I hope this video has showed you how easy it is to add Sparkplug support to the Highbyte Intelligence Hub. For more information on Highbyte and the Highbyte Intelligence Hub, please contact us. Thank you for watching.